Hey guys, welcome back to Pal Gang. So today in this video, I'm going to share a story or tutorial or review or whatever else you want to call it on how I taught myself how to solve Omega Minx. So let's go. So for the tutorial part, I recently got a Mega Minx. This is the Cyclone Boys Mega Minx, or it could be called the Cyclone Boys G Mega Minx because that's just what they call their cubes. But it's a pretty nice cube. It has pretty nice turning and it's smooth. It's a great beginner Mega Minx. And since I am a beginner, because when I taught myself how to solve it, I was a beginner. So it's a great beginner Mega Minx. So, and I really like it. It's a huge puzzle and it's pretty fun to solve. So I got this and I thought it would be fun to teach myself how to solve a Mega Minx. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I taught myself how to solve it and we'll get right into it. So let's go. So when I first mixed this up, I was like, wow. Because normally when you see a cube, it has four corners instead of five and four edges instead of five and six sides. This is a pentagon shape and it has 12 sides. So as a beginner, I was like, wow, how am I ever gonna solve this? Because this thing is huge. Now I have heard before, this is a lot like solving a three by three. So I decided to solve it like a three by three. So my first step would be to solve the cross or star because this isn't really a cross. So we'll get right into that. So what I do is I find an edge and I found this blue one right here. So what I normally do is since I haven't memorized the colors and the orientation of it because there's 12 sides and it's a lot different and more complex than memorizing a normal cube like this because this is pretty easy. There's simple opposites on it, but this Mega Minx is crazy. So when I first solved it, I solved the star and I found this edge right here. So then I moved it up to the top and then I rotated it. So it would be right there. And so then I have my first edge solved. Now I really try not to move the edge away from its centerpiece because then it just messes up my color coordination. And then I find this one, what I do is I move it like that so it's right there. Then I move it up and in. And then this red one is kind of tricky, but all I normally do is I just move it until I just keep on moving it. It's what I normally do until I finally get it to the side that it's on. The next one would be the purple one right here. I move it to where it's connected to the center. I move it like that. And then the green one is already there, so I move it like that. Now, when I taught myself, I needed to learn F2L, but I already since I already knew F2L, I already have a tutorial on that, by the way, if you guys want to learn F2L. So when I learned F2L, it looked like I really needed to use first two layers or F2L right here because I'd have this pair, this pair, this pair, this pair, and this pair. And then I decided to go on from there. So I first located this pair. So what I'd do here, if I was in this case on a three by three or other cube, I'd put it like that because then it would connect them. I'd move it to this back down, put it to the side, and then I'd have that pair. But you can't really rotate it around one side because there's many sides on it. So then what I'd do is I'd pair them together like that. And since the pink side isn't solved, you don't need to do anything to it. Then I can just insert it right here. Now, my second one right here, I pair them up, move it down, then move it around. And once you pair up your sides and corners, I just pair them up and then move them whichever way around the cube you need to. I wouldn't move them apart from each other. I'd recommend moving them in a pair. So I found this one and then I found the other one on the back side of the cube. So what I'd recommend is 
since this one has blue on top, if I move it up, it'll be yellow. So I want to make that yellow on top, as you can see right here. Then I can move it up, move it to the side, and move it back down. And now I have them in a pair. And now I can move it around until it gets right to the place that it needs to go in. And then I have my last pair, which is somehow already connected. And then, oh yeah, forgot, I have five pairs, not four. So next one is right here. So I found this, then I found this piece, which is already connected, which is a very nice place to be in. Move it down, do a U2, or yeah, U2, then you put it in. And then you have the full, first whole layer solved. So that's how I did F2L. And then, as you can see, the white is on opposite of gray. So what I try to do is I try to solve it all around until I get to the gray piece. And then I do some PLL and some OLL, but it is kind of complicated once you get to that spot. So if this tutorial is a little complex for you, I'd recommend learning F2L because that will make it a lot easier and it will make it easier to understand. So now I normally start with the blue side. Then I found this edge, I move it down and I put it in. And then this is the other one. I can put it in like that. And since you don't need to move things out of the way that much, because since this there's five sides instead of four, so there's a wider range to move things out of the way. Um, I found these two and I can move it like that to make my F2L pair and then I put it in. Now for this one I already have it there so I can just do a simple algorithm to pair them together and then to put them in. Um, for the blue right here I found it right here now you have to locate the side and for me, this is the hard part because there are so many sides all over the whole puzzle. I think that's what they call it. I mean, I'm not really sure. It could be called a puzzle. It could be called some other weird shape with a gun in it at the end. But I just call it a puzzle. And so, anyway, it's kind of hard because you have to locate the piece all over the huge puzzle. And then you have to find it and hopefully uh, pair them together to put in. And it's kind of complicated when you pair it together. So I have my whole blue side solved. Now I try to look for one that has the most edges solved. So that'd be red because all of them have like two or one edges, or I could do yellow, but I'm just deciding to do red right now. So I find the last red edge and I move it around until I can put it in like that and I found this piece it's already in its spot so I just have to find another piece which is right here then it, if you don't know this trick well I'd recommend learning it but in this spot if you just move it up so in this spot if the piece is it's an F2L trick and what you do is, if the piece is in its spot but rotated, you make this side piece so it's aligned with its center. And this is normally on a 3x3. Three three. And then you move it up, you move it to the side, move it down, and then put it in. But, for example, since, it, since the piece that is the bottom, which on a normal 3x3 three three would be right, or the side that you want to do the F2L on and the cross on, if it's like this, then if you just do two sexy moves, which is R, U, R prime, U prime, that would also put it in. So I'll just have to rotate this. I'll just have to rotate another piece back to fulfill the uh, corner twist. And that puts that in. And we have the last red one, which is the red, pink, and tan. And I pair them together, put them in, and now my next side, I'm going with green, because it's just right there. 
then I put it like that, then I make the cross, or the star. I keep calling it a cross, but it really is a star, so you gotta remember that. And for the green, the one thing that is kind of confusing on this is that there's two greens, so when you're looking for one green, sometimes you end up finding the other green, and there's also two blues, so for me that is pretty confusing sometimes. But so anyway, we get back to here. We need to find the cross edge because I found this green and I found the edge that goes with it. And then I pair them together, move it down because here that's where we're putting them in. And then I put it in. And the last one, which is right here. Pair them together, put them in. And so it's basically just a jumbled F2O pair one. And for here, you see I already have this green pair right here. So what I do is I put it like that. And since I already have the pair right there, I can put it in. But first, we need the side. Because this is the last two sides and um you need to put the side in because then you can do f tool and then i normally rotate it like this so this square is down and then you can put the pair in right here and then right there but anyway what we'll, we have to make that pair and then we have it paired together so then i normally move it to down so it's easier to put that pair in and that pair is the let's see it's the orange purple and yellow so that pair is right here what I do is I do the put that down then do a u2 and the thing is you could either do a, a u3 is the same as a u prime uh, two because since there's five sides it's not just a u prime is the same same thing a u prime two is the same thing as a u2 it really needs to be more specific because a U prime two is different from a U two. So we'll pair them together, put them in, and now we have our last one, which is right here. We have that edge we know it's supposed to go in, and we have this right here. So purple is the bottom, move it down, do a U two. And then we just put it in. Now for here, what I, what I use is mostly to look OLL because it's kind of hard to do PLL on here. And in this case, there's one right there. What I'd recommend is doing the basic beginner method for solving the cross, just the most basic ones, like the, um, F, then do inverse sexy or sexy move and then you solve the cross and so if there's when I normally do that as you can see I have it like this I normally ignore the side that's right here so if you're solving the star or cross then I normally ignore that and then as you can see this is almost the v-shape so since it's about the v-shape i do that inverse sexy with the f moves and then you're in this space or this part and what i do here is i just move around the pieces until i eventually get it but what i normally do is i try to get two of the pieces uh the gray pieces solved because then I can do the normal um, R, U, R prime, U, R, U, 2, R prime. So if I look at like the, here, I normally do that one, the algorithm. And as you can see, it would rotate these three and these two would be rotated on the top. So then I just find a state where I can rotate those three and then I do a U3, or I could just do a U prime three. And now I'm in this state. This is a kind of difficult state, 
um as you can see i have this one this one and this one and these two are across from each other so these three aren't somehow connected so i can go like this but then as you can see it breaks that and then if i go like this that wouldn't be solved and then if i try this side let's see so it's basically just trying things and seeing if they'll work and when i first solved it i just did a bunch of random i did just did that algorithm a bunch of ways just to see how well it would work and there's also the left hand algorithm i've taught in one of my tips and tricks videos which is like that and then you can just do that and first so then you just do it one more time and then you have the whole top salt which is basically mostly to look well except you don't use any of the algorithms except for the two the one with the right hand and the one with the left hand so for these algorithms if you guys don't know these algorithms I'll put them up at the top of the screen but the one algorithm that I was just doing is R U R prime U R then I can either do U prime 2 or I can do U3 and then I move it down which is R prime so the other one I was talking about is the left-handed version of that which is left prime then you do u prime left u prime left prime then you can do u2 or you can do um u prime three and then you move it down and then you should have all of your gray top solved now in this case the main algorithm that i use to swap two corners is a modified j perm so on a normal cube it looks like this i'm using a five by five because that's just right here with me so this is the algorithm and then as you can see it switches these two because they're both in pairs and then if you do that one more time they're back together but on here, there, you can't really switch these two because when I first tried it, it was kind of hard to. So what I try to do is locate a pair. I try to locate pairs or sides that are paired up with their corners. And I have this one right here and I have this right here, but that's it. So what I do here is if you do that j perm the left hand version by the way on here would be like that and i'll show you these algorithms first as an intermission so we'll go to that intermission and then i can show you guys these algorithms so the algorithm is r u2 R prime, U prime, R, U two, L prime, U two, R prime, U two, L. And then as you can see, it makes all of these pairs. And when we did it on the other cube, it would switch the two pairs also and that's the exact same thing as it does here now to put it back into a solved state what it would do is the these two stay the same so these two um edges and sides like the, these three pieces right here and these three would stay the same so these four pairs would stay the same and same with these four and then this one goes over here so this goes right over here and then this goes around like that 
So we'll do it one more time. R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U2, L prime, U2, R prime, U2, or U prime two. Then we do L. And then as you can see, it puts it back together to where you just have to do a U-turn and then it will get in, it into that state. Now we'll try the left hand algorithm. So it does the same thing except it just is, um, it is switched. So we'll do it, it's left prime, U prime two, left, U left, U prime two, right, U prime two, left, U2, right, prime. And then, as you can see, it makes it into these pairs. Now, if we do it one more time, as you can see, it these four are staying together, these four are staying together, and then this pair goes right into here. So we'll do it one more time. Left prime, U prime two, left, U prime, or U, and we do left, U prime two, then we do right, U prime two, left, U two, right, prime. And then you can just do a U turn, and then it will get in it into that spot. Now, since the intermission is over, we'll go over this part. So now that I just taught you guys the algorithms, what you can see is right here, we have this pair. And we already have this pair. So the algorithm we're going to need to do is to preserve these two. And as you can see, we already have the bar here, or these two corners. So if we do that, Right now, if we do the left-handed algorithm, it'll be at the top of the screen. We do it like this. Oops. As you can see, those two stayed together. And the blue and the orange would stay together. So now we have all the corners solved, so now we'll have to go to solving the edges. Now, since we're solving the edges, what you also need to know is if you do the right-handed algorithm and then you do the left-handed algorithm, so these two sides would stay put together. If I did the right-handed algorithm and then the left-handed algorithm, these three sides would go clockwise. Now, if I did the left-handed algorithm and then the right-handed algorithm, these three sides would go counterclockwise. So as you can see, what we want to do is make it so two sides are complete, they're just across from each other. And as you can see, these two are connected to each other. So we want two that are across from each other. And if I do it right here, if I make these go counterclockwise, the orange will stay the same, this tan color will stay the same, and the pink would go here. So that's what we're going to do. We do that left-handed algorithm, and then we do it the right-handed algorithm, which is over here. And as I predicted, these two would, the orange and the pink would stay together. So now we gotta rotate these like here. And if I do it this way, it wouldn't work because they need to go counterclockwise when you start with the left hand. They go clockwise when you start with the right hand. So I go right here. And then I do the right hand first, then the left hand. Now I can do, and now as you can see, they're all in these pairs, so we just have to do it one more time and then it will be solved.
All right, and then we solved it. So that's how I taught myself to solve a Mega Minx. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already, click that subscription button. Boo! And then check out our other cool things. And if you didn't understand this tutorial, put it in the comments and maybe I'll make a beginner tutorial for this. It was kind of complicated, but after a while of practice, I finally, finally memorized how to solve the Mega Minx, and it is pretty fun. If you guys have any other new ways I can solve it, I'll put those in a video too, but so far I've only been solving it the way that I taught myself. So if you have any new tutorials or ways for me to solve it, put that in the comment section. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. See you next time.